you. We're going to start by just having our five wonderful students all introduce themselves and talk about their major, uh, the company they work for, and what their role is at that company. Hi, my name is Danielle. I'm currently a junior in the LES psych program. I work for ICO right now. I'm their HR intern, so I do a lot of like talent acquisition right now with recruiting season. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Katie Cavis. I'm currently a senior uh, studying industrial organizational psychology. Uh, I work for Amrin as an innovations operations intern. So that kind of you know takes care of everything that the team needs. Um, but specifically my focus is uh, HR and recruiting and then as well as project management. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Joey Hartz. I am a senior studying information sciences and I am working at Graybar as a UI UX design intern. Um, I do a little bit of everything, so obviously UI UX design, but um, I also get to participate in project management and some like front-end development things and um, just some overall creative strategy and thinking. Hey guys, I'm Nate. Uh, I actually just graduated in December, so I'm no longer a student technically, um, but I did study advertising uh, with minors in informatics and Spanish, and I currently work at AbbVie. They're a biopharmaceutical company, so if you haven't heard of them, think um, Humera, Botox, a lot of those big brands that you might see on TV, they run a bunch of different ads uh, for it. Um, with that, I'm a marketing analyst, so I look at um, doing a lot of reporting and a lot of Power BI dashboards and data visualization um, for some of our campaigns that we're running. Glad to be here. Hi there, I'm Grace Grummer. Um, I'm a senior at the University of Illinois, double majoring in graphic design and studio arts. I work at Graybar as a UI UX designer, so um, same position as Joey. I do a lot of UI UX design, but I also help with some graphic content creation as well. I'm going to try to not use the mic. Um, our, my next question is, I lo a lot of students are curious as to how you got your position. Can you, so you need, can you talk about the search process and then also what skills you had that you think were helped you land the job? Okay, I'll start. Um, I actually got the original position. So I work at Agco now. But this past summer, I worked with Emily at Research Park Enterprise Works, and I got that internship through a panel just like this. Um, I stayed afterwards and ended up just having like a few questions for Emily, and we like hit it off, and I interviewed, and that's what I did for the summer. Then that led me to meeting James, who's now my current supervisor at Adco. So I transitioned through Research Park, which is really common for a lot of interns. We tend to bounce around from places. Everybody, it's a really good community, so everybody's super supportive if you need to like find a new like experience. Um, some skills that I think really helped me were just asking questions and being very open about your concerns and your schedule. Everybody's really flexible, and if you're open from the beginning, it makes the whole process so much smoother. Yes, so I got my job um, at first, I've heard great things about Research Park, so that was my number one priority when looking for an internship. Um, so at first, I looked at the job board, um, and one of the positions there was for Enterprise Works. Um, and my older brother, who in fact is uh, Danielle's boss, James, um, I was talking to him, and I was telling him about how excited I am about this like position, and I was telling him about my interests and my skills, and he was like, oh my goodness, Katie, like there's a perfect position for you at Amron. Um, he was actually a full-time uh, position at Amron at the time. So um, I guess I kind of got my job through that connection, and I clicked with the site manager uh, very well. Um, so it ended up going awesome. I think some of my skills, um, one of my positions, whenever I was in high school, I was a uh, scheduling coordinator and a main supervisor uh, for one of the uh, park district programs. Um, so, like, my ability to work with people as well as be, you know, fairly organized and scheduling their schedules and communicating uh, really helped me, and those skills have helped, you know, my position today. Yeah, so my story is probably pretty unique as anybody's, but, um, I spent some time with Emily at the park as well. Um, I worked there the you know summer before my sophomore year, and then also you know spent some time in the fall. Um, left for a while, and then actually came back this past summer. And so yeah, it, I've spent a lot of time at the research park um, working with the staff at Enterprise Works. And then this past fall, I really started to think about my future uh, with being a senior. Uh, and you know, I, I went to the high school career fair. Um, 
obviously had to go talk to Emily and some of the other staff and research partners. They kind of pointed me in the direction of companies that you know I thought or they thought would be good for UI UX positions. That's what I was looking for, um, and just ended up you know bumping into Todd Hart, the site director at Graybar. Um, had a really phenomenal conversation with him, just telling him about my experiences and kind of just clicked. Um, and so yeah, really you know that that led me down the path to getting an internship. I never even went through like an interview process because talking to Todd at the career fair was my interview. Um, and I just came in, talked to him more, and then started in December. And um, now I'm actually, you know, have accepted a full-time offer post-grad. So, you know, what I can say about yourself is learn how to articulate yourself and your experiences really, really well. Um, the better you can talk about yourself and the better you can tell your story to people, sometimes that's more important than what you can put on a resume or what you can put in a portfolio. Um, learning how to talk about yourself or, or talk to other people in general is the most valuable experience you can have. Okay, so this might seem a little cliche, and I need it, but so as a freshman, or I guess I was touring campus like before I came to school here, and I was like, oh wow, like I heard about Research Park, I was like, we were talking about it on tour, I think, and I was like, that's super cool, um, like are you serious, like we actually have this on campus, because I don't think a lot of schools have this built out of like a, a sort of program kind of thing, and so uh, as I knew it was something I always had kind of wanted to sort of pursue. And so as a uh, junior, I was involved in a student organization, American Advertising Federation, and I had a, a friend in it who was uh, also currently working at Research Park at the time, and so I connected with her, and then through the position, that's, that's sort of how I um, got into the conversation. So definitely network and try to meet people who are in those roles, and you're like, wow, I could do that. That's a, a really unique opportunity. Um, mine isn't as interesting as the rest of these. I just went on Handshake and I submitted an application and I got a call back and I interviewed at Gray Bar and I got the job. I mean, I think a good thing when you're applying to UIUX and graphic design positions is your digital portfolio. I definitely talked through that and being able to like really know what's in your portfolio and what are your strong suits and explaining your process I think really helped me secure the job. Um, and yeah, I mean, I can't really say anything beyond that, but it wasn't as exciting as um, networking and knowing of people. Just handshake is great if you ever use it. So the point I see some people saying in the back, there are at least four seats up in the front if you want to if you want to grab a seat. Um, my next question is for all of you to just talk about a really cool project or what's the favorite thing that you've worked on so far in your position. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so I think my favorite project that I've ever worked on so far was with Emily over the summer. We had um, a ping pong tournament, <laughs> and it's for pretty much all of Research Park. So all the companies that are in Research Park are invited, and no matter what company you work for, the summer everybody tries to make it as like interactive and like a learning experience. So you get to meet a lot of interns, which is how I've met Katie and a bunch of other people. Um, and one of these events is a ping pong tournament that is hosted by Emily's, like, all right, like the Enterprise Work interns. And so this was the first project where I got to, like, see something I fully created come to life and see so many people enjoy it. And it was, like, everybody was excited about it and would talk about it after work and people would get out of work early for it. So it was just really fun to, like, see how much, like, my work could really, like, change a day, especially in, like, an HR position and how important being involved in the community you work at like can help and go a long way. Before I share my experience, the ping pong tournament was fantastic. It was so much fun. Um, they also put on like a lot of good events. For example, the softball you know league. Um, I'm actually wearing my shirt um, that our team wore. So um, great events at by Research Park. Um, my favorite project that I've been able to take on is um, kind of reevaluating the recruitment and hiring process. So um, I first started out as a project manager my first um, you know, summer internship. And then the next summer we hired a couple more uh, individuals in my position. And we didn't have enough projects for each of us to be like a project manager. Um, so I saw this need to kind of uh, reevaluate the system. Previous, the previous summer we had like over 200 applicants and there was no organized system to you know, filter those applicants, to you know, get in contact with those applicants. So this previous summer, I took it upon myself to, you know, learn some automation um, and, you know, kind of organize and automate that process. 
So um, now the process looks like you scan a form um, and all of your information is uploaded into this Excel sheet. Um, we email our recruiters with your information um, and if you know we feel like you're a great fit for the job, we'll contact you. Um, it's, it's been really beneficial to um, you know, find something that I'm passionate about as well as improving, you know, I'm not familiar with any programming or automation at all. Um, so this past summer, like learning that skill um, has been incredibly beneficial and you know, uh, it's something that I want to pursue more. Yeah, I would, so I haven't been in Graybar for too long and a lot of the projects that, um, you know, I've been involved with I'm actually still working on. Um, but I'll go back to my time at Research Park and, and working with, um, you know, the tenants at Enterprise Works. And so the first position that I held there was as a front end, uh, like web developer. And something really cool that I don't think I'll, any, really any company in the park does at all is the opportunity to work with real world clients. And so as a front end web developer, like I would get to work with teams of designers, um, project managers, communications, and we would all come together in like a six week period over the summer and we would build one of the startup companies a website. And so that was really valuable because as somebody who like likes to have a view from all perspectives, like really interested in project management, strategy, like design, you know, programming, whatever, like I have all these different interests. And so for somebody who is so multifaceted, it's great to learn about all those things. The other thing is like learning to work with clients teaches you so much because it's so, so different than just working like you know what the projects you do in your classes or the projects you do like at the company you end up at like you're doing those for internal reasons most of the time sometimes they see customers but whenever you're actually going and like creating a solution for somebody it teaches you quite a bit so so all the companies on um, up here are really big companies uh, and I, that was one of the things when I started at, at Abby I didn't like I realized it was a big company but when you think about it like I think 50,000, 70,000 people, Kirsten, correct me if I'm wrong, um, something like that, a big, massive company. And I was really nervous about like, oh, is it gonna be like where people are just doing their own thing and working on uh, one project, they don't really get to communicate to different teams. And that was one of the really unique opportunities I had at my first team. I was involved in like an innovation accelerator, which basically, if you don't know what that is, it's basically for environmental sustainability, big companies generate a lot of waste and are trying to both save money and then sort of like reduce their environmental impact. And so my team was tasked with um, trying to reduce our carbon footprint, our energy use, and our water waste. And we also were trying to just promote that engagement among the company. And so my role in this team uh, was uh, to sort of, I started out as communications and marketing, trying to internally get people to understand what we did, and then also get teams to join um, our initiative and make a bigger impact on the company. Um, and I later transitioned into more like analytics on that side of it and understanding the impact that our team was making internally. Uh, and that helped us with shareholders and internal um, people uh, to understand what we were actually doing for the teams. But it was really cool because a passion of mine is environmental sustainability um, and climate change activism. And I thought that was really cool to be able to work in a big company uh, that offers that. So. Um, I would say my favorite project at Graybar is the one I work on the most. I've worked on a couple, especially during the summer we had more time, but it's um, an interactive graphic and I like it because I get to experience like uh, working with other people in a way that you don't, at least within my major. I get to coordinate with developers and use like boards like DevOps and assign tasks. I never had like a, a position where I would have as much input as I think this doesn't look right, like maybe we could try it this way. And I think the other part of that is um, I really appreciate that we really get to communicate with corporate. I get to talk to stakeholders and people who actually have like big positions at corporate and it makes the, what I'm doing feel like it's more meaningful in a way. It makes me feel like I'm part of the company and um, I really appreciate that. You too. I was going to have a great time. Can you talk more about just the mentorship that you've received, you received in your um, I, with your company, maybe just both from a manager and also just from, I know a lot of the intern teams get really close um, from what you've learned from your peers as well. Yeah, um, well during the summer, uh, Gray Bar, we have two days remote and three days in the office. So the days in the office, we really do connect with one another. 
I know we did like um, a couple days where we would just talk about, we had like maybe eight or nine projects going on within the lab that were all different for different areas of the company. We would just present to each other like, here's what we're doing. And we're like, oh, cool, and here's what we're doing. So it's really great to connect with people and to see the kind of broad range of projects that are available, even within one company in the research park. And I got to connect with people who I usually wouldn't, you know, interact with on campus, like people who are majoring in data science and people who are majoring in computer science, and I get to talk to them about what that experience is like, what, how is their job different, just learning about, I don't know, different things, it's, um, it's invaluable. And then to speak to management, I, we have a really great manager, Todd Hart, he gets us all together, we talk, you know, it really is, um, Great, it's flexible. I know we talked about that earlier, and the remote work is great too. I mean, for flexibility um, reasons, but yeah, and then to go further with the stakeholders, you do, you become connected to the company. I talk to people with, um, you know, who are working corporate communications very frequently, and people who are working on the marketing team, and people who are um, salespeople, and people who, uh, I don't know what the position would be called, but like you network with um, companies that work closely with Graybart, like products we sell, I suppose. And it's just nice to get to talk to not only professionals who are in this, the same age and in the same school as you, but also professionals who are out there in the real world and learn about their diverse range of experience. So I don't know how it is at uh, all the other companies here, but at AbbVie, it's structured where you have a project manager, in most cases, this is how it is. You have a project manager, and they're, sometimes they can be based in the Champaign office, but most of the time, they're based externally at our headquarters or anywhere else in the country. Um, and so basically, you would be assigned to the project, you'd work with them, you'd report to them, you'd have meetings with them. Um, but then you also, in Champaign, we have um, sort of like the, the Champagne office acts as sort of like a cohort. So then you're also, you're getting mentorship from the champ the people in the Champagne office, which is really helpful. Uh, they can give just general career advice, life advice, um, and also just understanding of like how to do, like the company as a whole, right? Like it's an entry level position, they're internships. The job is to introduce you to the, com the company. And so it does a really good job at like distilling what the company is at the Champagne office, but then you get really good mentorship as well with your project manager uh, in like wherever they are, uh, and then for more like specific technical things that you do in your day-to-day -day role. So um, is that how it is for you guys too, for the most case? Cool. But I didn't realize that before, like when I started, so before I started. So I just want to try something here. So by a show of hands, how many of you are getting ready to graduate in May? Anyone? Okay, how many of you are like juniors, sophomores, first year? Okay, cool, so pretty diverse. But you know, something that I want you to keep in mind, every time you look for an internship, you're looking for a company, um, this is my piece of mentorship to you. Look for a place that facilitates like great flow of ideas, really values your thinking. And the reason I say that is because every single person in this room has hard skills, they have soft skills, and every person is unique. That is your value proposition. And so something I have been taught by a lot of great mentors over my career is that great ideas in the room are valued. Um, you know, something that I really enjoy about working at Gray Bar with, with Todd Hart is every time that I throw out an idea, it can be like really basic or it can be just absolutely wild and like out of this world. He's always perceptive to it. He's like, yeah, well, you know, like we could consider that or like, you know, here's why that wouldn't work. And he kind of like, we kind of just like talk back and forth. There's no like, you know, I'm above you, I'm superior to you. Like there's, there's that like, I guess, feeling of being a colleague, even though he's much farther along in his career. So um, yeah, I would just say look for mentors in your life that are gonna like, you know, allow you to think and project your thoughts and ideas and um, put value to those things, so. Um, I would agree with every single one. Um, my uh, my uh, my intern experience at Amrin, we have weekly one-on-ones with our supervisors. So um, through that process, um, they've taught me a lot of hard skills, a lot of soft skills, where I can improve. Um, but one thing that I found really unique, and I don't know how you guys also experience, um, is they really cared about me as an individual, as a person, and as an employee. 
Um, so if they see me struggling with, like, you know, maybe my personal life, or if they see me struggling with an individual on a project, they really take the time to talk it out, um, see where I can improve, see how, you know, um, I can deal with this better in the future. Um, going on to my interns, my fellow coworkers, um, I've learned a lot of data and a lot of programming and a lot of analytics through them, um, as well as like, you know, kind of seeing that way of thinking and maybe um, taking that for myself and be like, oh, how would so-and-so like think about this um, more in an analytical standpoint versus, you know, my non-analytical standpoint. Um, but yeah, overall, a great experience. Um, one thing to take away is um, make sure that you click with your manager as much as they click with you. Um, I agree completely to everything they've said. Um, speaking on more of the interns that you'll work with, um, at least at Enterprise Works, we ended up becoming a really good group of friends. Um, I spent the whole summer with most of those girls and we still to this day talk. Um, and as for the supervisor point of view, um, I feel like the best thing you can look in a mentor is somebody who's willing to like put you first, like Katie said, but also just like with school. Like Emily was extremely supportive when I felt like I wanted a change in internship, same with my, my current supervisor at ADCO. He's very honest and very understandable that they were in the shoes that we are right now and that you have to move and you have to change and you can't stay, like you can stay at the same internship and make it a full time, but also sometimes that's not what's in the cards for you and you need to grow and change. So for example, I got hired this January, but I'll be leaving in May because I got an internship in the city so James was super understanding and knew that that meant that I had to find new experiences and learn more about myself, and the only way I could do that was to leave and maybe come back or maybe not, so. Do we have any questions from the group right now? Nothing right now. We'll um, leave it again at that. Oh, oh, I thought I saw a hand. Never mind. <laughs> um, I'm interested in hearing how all of you have maybe through your internship your ideas of what your career goals are and what your top skills are has changed um okay so mine's kind of interesting so i study io psychology so industrial organizational which means i was on the very like hr path and that's what i still am i'm still on the path but um my first internship with research park was a project manager position and even though it was still in the same like area, it wasn't exactly HR because the position was currently being filled at the time that I applied. But having the project managing allowed me to like really feel confident in my skills and working with people my age because I had never worked in a situation where I was leading and managing like peers that were in my class like the same age. It was usually people younger, so that really helped me and. Through my HR internships, which is what I currently hold and the one that I had before this, um, I've learned that I really like talent acquisition and I like recruiting. And I think that there's a lot of ways that you can change and people, I was, so kind of backstory, so I've always been psychology. And I, when I switched over to HR, I felt like maybe I wasn't gonna help as many people because I was just gonna like, sell my soul to corporate America, you know? <laughs> But instead, I realized that it's a very good place where you can learn and change. And like, I think diversity is important. And you're going to be at a job for maybe 40 plus years, and you have to be comfortable there. And that is a place in HR that I found that I can help. And if I can make one person's life better, or that got hired and they felt like they belong somewhere, like that is going to complete the feeling that maybe I wasn't going to just like be a therapist. So that kind of is something that I've realized through these internships that have made me realize that this is the path I want to be on. Um, that's so funny because I'm also industrial organizational psychology. My first year of my internship was also project management, and now I'm in HR. So I guess my story is very similar to Danielle's. Um, but one thing I would like to add, th throughout my kind of HR experience and talent acquisition, um, I've also found that I like the um, business strategy behind it and finding processes that, you know, they work. But let's find a way to improve them, whether that be through, you know, data analytics through um, other people. Um, that's that's just something that I never really thought about. And throughout this internship, um, it really came to light for me. So I was like, you know, maybe I'll go and I really like talent acquisition. But I was talking to my older brother and he was like, maybe business operations is for you. Um, so that's like, you know, a new door that's open. I'm not. You know, it's in the back of my head. I'm not pursuing it. I still really like talent acquisition, but you know, in the future, if I ever need a change of pace, it's there. 
Yeah. So that was, those were both really great. Um, yeah, be flexible to change. No career is linear. Um, I actually came into U of I as a graphic design major, and then I switched about halfway through to information sciences. Uh, just because I found I enjoyed the technical side of things a little bit more, um, and I, I still love to incorporate the design aspect. But to put it in perspective how non-linear your career is going to be, let me give you a timeline of what my three years at U of I have looked like. So I've gone from front-end development intern, to graphic design intern, to sales, to creative project management, to product design, and now UI UX design. And so all that is a lot of words to say. I have done a lot. Um, and I have learned a lot from all of those things. I've especially learned what I don't want to do. And I feel like you have to have those experiences to know what's right for you. Um, so just be open to opportunities. Be a sponge to the people around you and, and, and try to pick up on what other people's jobs entail because that'll tell you a lot about maybe um, what you do or don't want to do. Like if you take an interest in, I don't know, let's say like product, you know, product management or something like that and you're currently in a design role, start trying to tap into those individuals, learn about what they know, talk to your you know, supervisor or whoever it may be and, and try to get your foot in the door. Um, so yeah, just try not to stay linear, like be open to new opportunities. Yeah, I agree. I think companies are begging us to come and join and and because our generation is so like quick and we we learn things case for me. I came in not knowing anything about Power BI or marketing analytics and through my first team and the roles I've had, I I basically was able to learn on my own and understand and it was really cool to have the support and the opportunity to do that where they know that you're a student and you don't know everything but you have the, they're giving you the opportunity to learn and take advantage of the resources that they have available so definitely do it and don't think that you're supposed to know everything apply to jobs that you don't have all the experience for most job postings have more qualifications than the candidate that normally gets it has so just keep that in mind um, my is kind of an odd experience when I think about how I ended up in UI UX design because I started my freshman year, which is in like 2018 at Purdue, and I did um, engineering classes and information systems classes and 3D modeling. Like I was all over the place. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my career. And I took a design class there and I decided to transfer here after my sophomore year and I went into graphic design. And then once I was doing graphic design, we started UI UX, some classes, and I was like, man, this is really like what I did at Purdue with the innovation classes and talking about engineering and entrepreneurship. And it was just kind of this odd mixture of the two. And I had only worked a volunteer graphic design position before um, my time here at Gray Bar. So um, when I saw there was a UI UX role, I'm like, I have a little bit of experience from it, from classes, I have some case studies I could present, and then I just have my time at Purdue, and that isn't really related to um, UI UX directly, so I was a little intimidated to apply to the job. I'm like, here, most of the applicants have maybe three years of just specifically design experience, but what I found is really useful, actually, in my interview was speaking the kind of random experiences that I've had, even if you don't think that they're directly related, I kind of sat there and I'm like, listen, I have programmed before. I used to teach coding classes to kids. I do understand some things about information systems and like I'm not technically gifted like an engineer student might be, but I know a little bit of something and I can prove that I can learn fast. So that was kind of my selling point and I know that that's not directly related to the question you asked but I just really wanted to like tell you if you think you might have a little bit of something that's relevant mention it during the interview because students here are highly adaptive and I think that the employers at the innovation park know that and as long as you can prove that you're smart and you can pick up skills fast or you have like an aptitude for certain skills even if you're not like an expert in Figma or an expert in, you know, HTML and CSS, I would say just go for it. And to answer the question that was originally asked, I'm super happy in this UI UX design role. I'm, you know, a designer, so I might go into web design or a branding agency or whatever, but I really appreciate having the opportunity to experience this. And this is definitely a role that I would consider in the future. Oh, I keep the mic. Can you talk about um, 
what you think makes the Research Park internship experience unique and why students should try to make that part of their Illinois experience. Um, well, like I said, I went to Purdue the first two years. As far as I knew, we didn't have anything like this. And this is really excellent. Like, this was a, a point for me to come to this school, even though I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get a job here. I'm just going to apply and see what happens. But the fact that employers kind of want students specifically from University of Illinois tells me a lot about our curriculum, about, like, the students here in general. They... I don't know how to explain it. Like when I apply to a job that's not through the research park, I'm like, there's dozens of students from schools and I don't know, you know, how I stack up to them, but here I know that they want University of Illinois students because they believe that we are capable of doing the job and that kind of gives me a little bit of confidence and I'm sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> what makes you University of Illinois or the research park internship experience unique? Okay, yeah, I mean, I guess that's Harvard. what makes yeah. it unique, <laughs> like, um, just, it's University of Illinois, and we feel connected, like, we have experiences amongst the interns that we share, and that's a unique experience as well, like, working with people that you have just one thing in common with is always better than just working with a group of complete strangers, and you'll get along with a group of complete strangers, but to have something to bond over is really wonderful when you start a job. Good thing you left Purdue. Yes. <laughs> um, so I think, think about it for a second. Most of the jobs at Research Park, if not all of them, they have to hire Illinois students. Mm -hmm. So, right? So, so yeah. you're the only, the applicant pool is oh, even at the biggest 50,000 students. So that's a lot smaller than any company that is looking elsewhere. So I, that's all I'll say to that. Just think about it. They want to hire Illinois students. That's why all of them have committed time and resources to come down to Illinois to have a physical office during a time after COVID where that's not usually as common. So take advantage of it. Yeah, something I find unique about working in the park is that every single company you see on the main, you know, main plates or whatever up here is a corporation. And that was one thing that I said is, I don't want to work for a corporation. Um, and, and so, <laughs> here I am eating my words. Um, but really, the companies in the park don't feel like you're working for like a mega conglomerate. Like, they, they really almost feel like startup-esque. Um, and so I was like, really attracted to working at Gray Bar because we are, you know, essentially like in the innovation lab, we operate as a startup with the backing of a $10 billion company. Like that's the best part of it is we get to take risks, we get to try new things, and like we're either rewarded for it or life goes on. Like we don't get slapped on the wrist for doing things and losing the company money if that's what happens. Like it's a very like open um, environment as far as that goes. So. You know, I think it's really unique. Another thing that I'll speak to um, really quickly, just not take up too much time, is the pipeline of talent. Once you start at the park, you never leave the park. And I mean that. Yeah. Like, you will never not talk to the people you know in the park again. And so the pipeline of talent, a lot of these companies actually want to hire interns to make them full-time employees after they graduate. That is their goal. It costs less to retain an employee. And if you can hire an intern, and train them and keep them, that's great for them. So once you get your foot in the door, like you're in, that's it. Um, all I hear is just facts up here. Um, you know, the companies at Research Park, they do want Illinois students. Um, you know, they promote us to take risks, to be innovative, that's why they call it innovation labs, innovation centers, acceleration centers. Uh, but one thing about Research Park that I really like is they host workshops during the summer and they invest in you as an individual, as an intern, not necessarily the companies, but Research Park itself. Um, so with that, I, I just feel very, you know, empowered as an individual to, you know, see that people who don't really know me, I don't work for them, right? Um, but they're investing in me. So learning some of those um, workshops and those skills um, just make me feel very welcomed and very happy to be a part of this group of people. Um, yeah, they, they really want you to have a great internship experience and then move forward in a full-time position. Um, yes, I feel like I would just be repeating everything everyone said, but I feel like kind of to touch on what Joey said, you work for a very big company. Like, Agco is like 
a global ag tech company and I have zero experience in ag tech. That has like nothing to do with anything I've ever thought to study. But you still get to make a difference in a field that you didn't think you might ever be in and that would only happen through a place like Research Park. Like the fact that you're able to talk and bounce ideas from interns with other companies or supervisors from other companies will allow you to make changes that like realistically maybe as an intern you wouldn't really think that you'd be making. For like example, like my supervisor is the North American region interns like site di like site director kind of situation. So I'm hi I'm helping hire interns for Georgia and for remote like other cities that have other internships when I, I realistically like that's a full time job task. Like I shouldn't be on the team to help decide fifty plus interns for their summer. Like things like that. Like you wouldn't have gotten that experience, especially when you go to like very like glamorous like internships that like maybe you're just working on a project for the summer and that's kind of what the whole like idea is behind it. So I feel like working at Research Park, there's a lot of flexibility of what you might be doing or what you might not be doing, but I think what everybody said is spot on too. I have two questions, final questions before we open it up to see if the room has any questions. You've all touched on just some general tips, um, but I just want to get back to that because I feel a lot of the students here are here because they're going to be looking for summer internships or maybe next fall. What has worked for you in the past when you approach employers who you don't know at all for the first time, or what have you seen other students do that's been successful? Um, okay, so for me personally, I'll talk from like a student point of view, and then I'll give an example as like behind the table at a career fair. Um, so from a student point of view, I kind of mentioned it earlier, just ask questions. Usually, even if the question feels like redundant of like, oh, like what made you lead and what made you work at Research Park? Like even if that's not exactly directed at the internship you want, it gets the conversation going and you're usually very like, it just kind of starts things and it makes it easier than you kind of just like sticking a resume in their face. And then uh, being on the other side of the table, don't stick a resume in their face, please. <laughs> like I've gone to many stuff. It's like, okay, thanks. And you kind of just like, you want to listen, but it doesn't help. Like you feel kind of robotic. Like you feel like you're just talking to a wall. So just kind of break the ice with a question or ask about the company overall, even if you know. It's always good to like have something. Um, we talk to a lot of people, so if anything sticks out that you have a cool experience or something like that you can say in two minutes, I think it helps a lot to like put a face to a name. Also, always connect. I know it's nervous to connect with people on LinkedIn, and you th at least for me, it's like, oh my god, I have 200 connections and they have 500 plus. It doesn't matter. It helps. You can ask questions whenever, and I think that's just kind of a good way, at least what I've noticed being on both sides of the table. Um, I would agree with that. Just having a um, organic, real conversation with the employer. Um, you know, they hear spiels all day. Like, I, I'm a senior. I do this. I do this. They they want to they want to invest in you. You know, not what you've done, but they want to see where you can go in the future. Um, so really letting your personality shine and your passion through that first discussion. Um, you know, on the other side of the table, and you know, taking that. Um, and I've also served on, I guess, both sides, represented Amarin. Um, that's what I've noticed. Um, and if, you know, for some reason your projects come up, um, show them that you're really passionate about what you do. Um, I think if I see, you know, some, some individual that's incredibly excited to pursue whatever they're doing um, and pursue their passions, I'm going to hire that person over, you know, someone who's like, I'm, I'm ready to work, you know, but show, show me that you want to work, you know. Um, so just follow your passions and be real. Yeah, I'll echo some of the similar thoughts. Um, you know, if you had to follow a step-by-step -step process, it's learn how to talk about yourself, go to a career fair, talk about yourself. Um, realistically, like, I feel like, you know, handing a resume to a recruiter anymore, especially, is like giving somebody your number at the bar. They're not going to remember it. They're drunk. They're not going to call you. Like, and, and so, just don't do that, like have a conversation, level set, and really talk about what you're passionate about and like what you hope to do in your future because you can have a skill list that spans two thirds of your resume, but none of it matters if like they don't know where you want to go. Like you can have so many skills that like you're smarter than Einstein himself, but it, it, it just really doesn't matter like if you can't 
make a connection with that person, like at the end of the day, that's your your network really matters, like just as much as everybody says. So. Yeah, and just be super persistent. I think I applied to every single company here except Graybar at sophomore and junior year, like those first semesters. So like it's not personal, it don't get back to you. It might even like most actually Research Park is really good about like recruiters or people actually answering you back, saying real people, not automated messages saying like, sorry, we already found another person for the position. But don't let that discourage you. They didn't make it personally, they just had someone else who they read the resume differently and was like, Oh, that's a better fit. Apply again. You could probably apply twice and then at the same company and get a job the second time. So don't take it personally. I mean, like people at Research Park are looking at a lot of resumes every day. So um, so I don't have a lot of experience approaching uh, employers at career fairs per se, but I can speak to, I've done a lot of interviews before and I've done um, portfolio reviews too, which is more of a graphic design, UI, UX, industrial design specific thing, but it's talking to people and essentially networking. Um, a couple key things that I would say like to keep in mind if I could give you any tips is like if someone calls you back for an interview, they already think that you're more than capable to do the job. Like, if you're called back for an interview, don't second guess yourself like, oh, I don't have the skills. They already think you do, so you need to walk into that interview like you're, like, like you already have the job. Like, I know what I'm doing. And you don't, you don't have to be like, you know, cocky about it, but just be like confident, shake people's hands, you know, that really helps. Um, like a good handshake. Uh, not saying, oh, like I'm doing right now, like not the filler words sometimes helps me a lot. And then the other key that I would say is also sending an email after you meet anyone for portfolio reviews or when I talk to people or when I interview. That follow-up email is usually how they remember who you are. You know, again, like they've seen dozens and dozens of people. But if you can say, hey, I'm so-and-so and I met you, I'm glad we talked about, and then pick a specific point. Like, I'm glad we talked about this specific thing. It was really useful, wonderful to meet you. And then that's it. That, I think, gets a lot of um, callbacks or like um, offers for jobs or whatever situation you're in. And it just makes you more memorable um, as a candidate. So that would be my advice. Can you all, um, I know, uh, like I said, a lot of the students here are looking for internships. What do you know about positions that maybe currently are coming up um, at, your at your company? Ooh, I do not know <laughs> too much about that. Um, I know that I applied around this time last year, though, for my summer position, and I'm pretty sure Todd said, like, We have some open. Yeah, we have some open. I'm for sure. I, I work this summer. I like working the summer the 40 hours a week is really great and like as an introduction into the company instead of doing the part-time work during the semester I mean that's great too but you really do feel integrated and I would say just go for it apply if you get rejected apply again next time they're hiring just keep on going and yeah that's my advice oh man do I have a lot for you okay I have a, a sheet with it so uh, February 28th I'll talk, talk slow, so if you want to write down. February 28th, 5 to 6 p.m. in the BIF, there's an info session for accounting and finance students. March 1st at 12, Greg Hall, comms, poli sci, humanities majors um, for an info session and networking. And then we have a ton of jobs currently posted and will be posted on Handshake. So apply on Handshake, um, connect with anyone you know uh, like at the company, and, and you'll, you'll be good. So I'm not passing that. <laughs> Yeah, um, at Gray Bar, we're kind of gearing up for the summer. So um, positions I 100% know that we have open right now. We have, uh, we're looking to fill one to two UI UX design positions for the summer. We're also looking to fill three software engineering interns. Um, I know this is directed towards non-STEM students, but for any of you who have an interest and maybe some skills in that, um, non-STEM doesn't mean you don't do it. It just means you're not in engineering. So um, yeah, we have those positions open, um, but then we also do have like analytics um, positions and sales internships um, and things like that. So the two places that you can primarily look, um, Graybar like internships or the Innovation Lab don't get posted on their website, but they do get posted on Handshake and the Research Park Job Board. And I'll speak to that real quick, that if anybody is looking for any job, any time, always look at the Research Park Job Board. There's lots of great opportunities on this. For sure. Um, I know Amarin, we're not incredibly good about putting our stuff on the job board, 
but um, I know that for this summer we're hiring two innovations operations internships um, so that's my position um, so if you're interested feel free to come up and talk to me after I have a uh, an interest link that I'll send you. Um, you can fill it out and we'll get your information. Um, there's a part that says, like, who would I get this link from? Go ahead and put my name and I'll know that you attended. Um, if you're also interested in following up, there's an email, uh, icenterhiring at amrit.com. Feel free, I kind of run that uh, share, shared mailbox. So send your name, uh, you know, send your interest, and maybe we could set up a 30 minute chat or something. Um, so currently for Agco, we are hiring for the spring and summer around 50 to 100 internships. That can be anything from like, obviously the software engineers, but for more like non-STEM focus, we have data analytics. We have a few communication positions open and we also have a few sustainable engagement internship positions, which I think is super cool. Um, and then if you have any interest about learning overall, like how Katie said, um, I have a link that I can share with you guys to the talent pool and you just kind of like fill it out, like your name and your stuff, and your information, and then you'll get invited to like send your resume and then from that on the process starts. So you don't really have to apply through like add code, like the official website, that's kind of later on in the steps. Thanks for bringing up the research park job board, I forgot, Joey. Um, we have cards back there, Sabrina has them, that will link you to the research park job board. You'll see positions for these companies as well as the other numerous companies in the research park. There's also a large um, number of startups who have positions for all students. Um, if you see a position on the research park job board, you know that it's exclusive to Illinois students, it's on campus in Champaign. So companies like Abbott, um, Agco, you'll see postings on Handshake that are maybe all over the country. The ones on our job board are just for the research park. Um, so check that out regularly. We post a lot this time of the year. Uh, do we have any questions from the group? Um, okay, so for Adco, we kind of, since we are a global company, the overall Adco completely is a remote company. So, but our internship at the Accelerator Center, which is one of the pluses of being at the U of I, is that your internship will be completely in person. So the way it's set up is you would apply, you would get the offer, but you would get hired by a manager. So the, your manager could be in Germany or Switzerland or Atlanta, Georgia, like he could, they could be anywhere but you could work, you would be working at our accelerator center. So you would get the summer with interns, all the interns majority of the time work, could work on teams, but all have designated managers and then they work on their individual projects. So this allows us to have a super flexible schedule because you can come in and out of the office, but you also get that summer internship position of like meeting new interns and getting to know other like full-time staff, having a support system because like again, you're facing projects that maybe you've never worked on and you need somebody to help or like quick questions. So you get to do both. So internship is fully in person at the Accelerator Center. Um, I would say that it's hybrid for Amarin. Um, I got the opportunity you, um, this past summer, you got to pick if you wanted to be, you know, uh, virtual or in-person. I picked in-person. Uh, I felt just uh, there's a lot more benefits, you know, through Research Park and through working there as well. Um, however, um, I think we're going to try this summer to do fully in-person. Um, but don't let that deter you if you want to be, you know, online. Um, I've talked with my supervisor, um, you know, about these, you know, positions, and he said if you're the right fit and if we really want you, by all means, we'll hire you to work virtual. Um, so don't let that deter you from, you know, not applying. Yeah, what I've seen at Graybar so far is that we're pretty, like, stuck to this, like, hybrid structure. So. Um, two or three days in the office a week and then, um, you know, two or three remotely. Um, I would say that there's probably flexibility in that, um, just, you know, if you're the right fit and, uh, and all that sort of stuff. Um, I definitely enjoy being in the office. We have great snacks, uh, ping pong table, a nice view of the pond. So, um, not to mention, like, it's, it's really nice to have a dedicated, like, office and space to work. And especially, and I'm sure a lot of you have encountered this, like after, you know, getting work past the worst of COVID, it's really hard to differentiate like your work life and your school life from your personal life. And so I find it really nice personally. 
Yeah, officially, I think during the spring and fall semesters, it's um, 15 to 20 hours, and I think 50% in the office of your time in the office, and the other 50% can be remote. And then the summers is 40 hours. Summers are more in person. Um, it's more fun, in my opinion, that way. And there's other things like we'll go up to headquarters and do a poster show um, for the work that people are working on. So I would say in general, you probably want to be in person. Uh, it's nice to have like remote days, but especially at this kind of level, I think it's really important to show face and like show the work you're doing and make them remember that you work there. Super easy to forget about someone who works remote all the time. But obviously, there's benefits. Just keep that in mind. Any other questions? Another one? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, my, uh, I have a little more questions and some comments. Um, my last question is, uh, have you ever experienced any challenges during the internship? If you have, uh, how did you handle? That would be my question. And some comments is like, um, I'm a PhD student. And um, I'm, I came here to well, interested in uh, positions, internship experience, uh, opportunities, but also my research topic is internship, especially virtual internship with professional identity development. So I, I really want to thank you all for sharing your experience. It actually helped me a lot to think about some of my research topics as well. Thank you for coming. <laughs> um, when you talk about challenges, I guess, I mean, um, my personal experience is our boss is pretty mindful of our time and our workload. He always asks before I take on another project, do you think this is within your means to take on another project? Which I like instead of just, hey, I have some new work for you, here you go, you know. I, he's very considerate. There has been a couple times during the summer where I felt very pressed for time with projects. And um, I think communication is really great at our office in particular. So if I really feel like exhausted, it's okay for me to reach out and be like, hey, is it possible that this deadline that's coming up, is there any chance of moving it? Or can I work on the stuff for this project at a later time to put this one as a priority? And I haven't had any major problems because things are pretty flexible and reasonable here. So um, that's my experience. Um, yeah, as far as challenges, I feel like um, getting familiar with ambiguity is a pretty big challenge in my day-to-day -day work. Um, I would just say that, like, be prepared to be unfamiliar with things or not know things. Um, definitely a good thing, like a good skill to have. If you're willing to kind of just brave it a little bit, it'll pay off, like, big time in the long run, so... Okay, we're going to wrap up. We're at time, but thanks everyone for coming. I'm guessing a lot of you have majors similar to the students who are up here, so I hope you learned about different opportunities that you can do in the research part or outside of the research part. Um, I want to plug our career fair quick. February 28th, it's at the iHotel Conference Center from 4 to 7. Uh, these companies will be here recruiting for some for the summer and then also thinking already to next school year, so we hope you come out. Um, but yes, if you have any questions for myself, just representing the research park as a whole, or these students, uh, you will be hanging out for a little bit.